today's knowledge webinar and find out all about cross gems, Rhino and Grasshopper parametric jewelry software. Cross Gem is a professional jewelry software with more than 100 tools, which allows you to design any complex model easily and quickly without having technical cat knowledge. Take advantage of parametric design without the need to learn traditional parametric trees and creating a powerful modeler that can be used by anyone in Rhino and Grasshopper. Today's webinar presenter, Enrique Del Molino, um, who is the main Rhino Golden Partner develop and Panther developer, and Juan Hernandez, the main designer of Crossbite. Their background goes back to the origins of Rhino Gold, um, and they are the ones who also created Panther 3D. So basically, um, you know, what they're telling us today is that Cross Gems is an evolution of Panther in all aspects. So this is super exciting. And this is where you can find Cross Gems on our website. Just search for it um, on the search bar and um, you can, you know, add to cart or you can talk to us. We'll be happy to assist you. And of course, you know, we sell also Rhino. So because Noveg is you know, it's the best way to purchase your three software because you can um, combine, uh, you can uh, get different products uh, without having to switch website. And uh, beside the, so the choices, we also can assist you and our services super quick. Check us out at novedge.com. And now I'm going to um, share Enrique's screens so it can get um, this show started. Take it away, Enrique. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Thanks for your words. Uh, as, as you said, uh, well, our background is uh, from RhinoGold since the beginning of RhinoGold. So we started uh, with RhinoGold 3. We made the RhinoGold 4, 5, and 6 version. And uh, next we made Panther. Panther 3D, and this is the evolution of that. Cross Gems is, is the evolution. So uh, I'm going to show a little bit the, um, the interface of Cross Gems. I will show the layout and how the things are, are done in Cross Gems. And after that, I will give the word to Juan uh, to show some models, which is the, the designer. So as you said, uh, my name is Enrique Del Molino. I'm the, the main developer and the CEO as well of the company. And uh, well, I'm going to switch my camera, okay? And now I will explain a little bit of, of Cross Gems. Uh, so the goal of Cross Gems is to offer to the jewelry <laughs> or to jewelry, uh, the jeweler, I'm sorry, a software design a parametrically, parametric jewelry in a simple and intuitive way. So um, in, in this meaning, uh, the user don't have to worry about uh, to handling the parametric tree, but it's a parametric program. So you, uh, you are designing, but Cross Gems uh, will uh, build the parametric tree in the background. So um, let me let me uh, open the program. So this is the features, but I think that it's better to show it to you. So in Cross Gems, we have two kind of interfaces: Rhino interface and Cross Gems interface. So in this interface, I think that it's uh, simple. But uh, if you are use it to Rhino, you can use Rhino interface as well. So it has the same features and the same tools. Uh, but in this demo, we will use this interface. So we have the compact interface, which is um, which is made from these buttons, which you can click. You can make it a little bit bigger or smaller, but it's the compact one. And you have uh, the menus inside. Okay. So it's the same that the expanded interface. But the point is in the expanded interface, you can keep the tools here. You can design and you can the keeps here. So if you click uh, with the right um, button, you will keep the, the tabs open. If you uh, click with the left button, so the other one will be closed. So it's, it's easy until now. <laughs> okay, so I will keep it uh, like that. 
And let me talk uh, about the common history, which is placed here. Okay, so once we are designing, for instance, I'm going to uh, place a, a gem. Okay, I will uh, set uh, a ring size, in this case, maybe an eight size, a little bit bigger. So you have the parameters in here. This is the common execution. And the workflow is exactly the same. So if you click uh, with the right button, uh, you will keep all the tabs open. But if you uh, click with the left button, you will click. You will have only uh, the tab you you click open. So now I'm going to place, uh, for instance, this uh, gem. I made it a little bit bigger. And now this object is reflected here. So if I place the, the mouse over here, if I hover, uh, it's selected. Okay, when I click it, it's selected. If I click here, it's unselected. If I click here, it's reflected here. So now uh, we are going to place um, a shank. So we're going to rings, we will click it on shank. And automatically uh, here in the ring, it's getting the size that I uh, set before. So in this case, it's the gem and ring. We can set it on self, but if we set it on gem and ring, all the comments will be set on this, um, on this master parameter, which means that if you change anything, all the other things uh, will change as well. But if you set it itself, uh, it, it won't be modified. So, uh, for instance, now I'm going to make it a little bit, a uh, little bit close and a little bit uh, thinner, okay, like that. And obviously, we can go to the gallery and we have uh, some profiles predefined, and we can save our our um, own designs. But uh, in this case, I prefer to to do from scratch. So now uh, we have two comments here, this one and this one. OK, so I am going to set the setting for this stone. And I will, uh, for instance, I will get, uh, no, this is uh, a key. This is the head. So I will click on head. And I will select this gem, which is the only one at the document. So if we can, uh, if we um, want to save this step, we can do it directly um, pre-select this gem and open the command. So by this way, uh, the gem will be directly set. And now, for instance, we are going to uh, adapt to rank, and uh, it will be directly adapted. There is another way to open, which is um, the uh, related comment. So for instance, uh, if I want, imagine that I uh, am editing or just uh, making from, from new the shank. I can go to related comment and select any comment. So for instance, if I get the gems curve, the gem on curve will be open the curve is set directly uh, to the shank isocurve, and the object to orient is uh, directly set to shank. So by this way, we can save uh, one step as well. And in here, we are going to move a little bit these stones. OK, I think that here it's OK. And now I can do the same. I can click on OK and set another comment, or I can go to related comments and choose another command. For instance, in this case, we can choose the channel cutter. The channel cutter will make a cutter uh, in, a, in a gem row. In this case, at uh, this gem row, which is the gem curve, which I am making right now. So I will click here, and it's selecting directly this gem row without anything else. Now we have the cutter. We are going to modify the caps. So I will set round cap, and probably we can keep it like that. So in this case, uh, I could uh, do the same. Go to related comments, for instance, and select uh, Boolean difference. So if I uh, select the Boolean difference, the object B, the cutter, uh, is automatically selected. So I only have to select the, the first object to make the Boolean. 
in this case, uh, the shank. So I will click on OK. And as you can see, uh, we probably uh, had to do these gems a little bit um, far from the ring. So we can go to the gems on curve and edit. And I will go to the options and I will move it a little bit. And all the things associated to the, to the gems uh, will, will be moved. So for instance, if I uh, have in these gems uh, prongs, let me, let me place directly from related comments a prongs row over these gems. So the gems are already selected, as, as I said. And now I'm going uh, to, uh, to validate the comment and edit again the, um, the, the other comment, okay, the gems, on, the gems on curve. And I will do exactly the same. I will move it a little bit here, okay, and all the components associated to that uh, are moving. So if I move it a lot, it will move a lot. Okay, but the point uh, is to place it. I think that 0 0.2, it's more or less okay. Yeah, that's perfect. So uh, I will click on okay, and we have all the comments here that we executed. But if you uh, take a look, probably you realize that there are uh, some comments missing, for instance, the shank and the cutter. So the reason is that uh, these comments are not in the document anymore. So in here, we have the Boolean, but this is not the shank. The shank doesn't have this hole. So the shank and the cutter are already uh, nested inside. So when a uh, comment is deleted, uh, you, will, you will see that the, the, that, that is it, uh, I don't know the name in English, I think that it's um, grayed out or something like that. So uh, it will be displayed or draw in the viewport uh, in red and in here in red. And if you take a look, for instance, on another one, this is not grayed out. This is grayed out, this is grayed out, this is grayed out. And when you have a common nested, uh, use it in a couple of tools or more than two tools, that will be reflected as well, like in here, okay? So you can check it uh, in all the comments. So that's the main uh, functionality of this, uh, of this panel. So, uh, well, I think that uh, I can show you a little bit more of that, but I think that uh, maybe it's a good idea to show you a little bit more of the interface. So the um, display modes are located in this corner, in the bottom left corner. Uh, by default, uh, the cross gems interface, the cross gems display mode um, is the, um, the the selected one. But you can change it in here. So the row trace it, render it, ghost it, and shade it. So I'm going to, can, to change to shade it. And one thing interesting is that if you have the four views, uh, you can change the active view clicking with the left one. So if I click here, I am changing uh, only this view because this is the active one. So if I click here, this is the active view. So I will change it through here. But if I click with the left button, uh, it will change in all views, as you know. Okay. And now let me change it again. And I will take a, a, a look to the object selector. So the object selector uh, is that one. Okay. So we have uh, two kinds of uh, selections, uh, the metal selection and the gem selection. It also uh, shows us information about the weight. This is the total weight of the, of the metals in here, and this is the total weight of the gems in here. So if I select, for instance, just one, one metal, this one, the weight is, is it's updated, and it's showing only the weight and the material of the current object. So if I select the head, it will change, Okay, now it's white gold instead of yellow gold, and the weight is also changed. And the same thing for the gems. So if I select these gems, we have no, no weight for metals, 
and we have uh, the material, which is diamond, and the height of the total of the object selected. The same thing in here. Okay, so uh, we can also go to the metals or the gems, just clicking in here, and we will have access to this panel, which is also accessible uh, for these tabs. And now we can, for instance, uh, select a material and you will see that it's reflected in here. So if I select a gem, the same thing will happen. Okay. Now uh, we cannot see the, the material of the gem, but we will go uh, to render it mode. And here I think that it's uh, more visible. Let me change the ground, probably in a marble black or something more less less brighter and i'm going to change uh, the gem material i will place for instance a uh, ruby inside uh, in the main gem and here i will place uh, emerald okay and for the metal i will select the i don't know the white gold for instance in here uh, the rose gold and for the bronze uh, i will select another one just to show you uh, how the metal selector works. I guess that the, the, the right bar is, is uh, to have in, in one metal, depends on the user, but is uh, to show it to you. So in here, we can see the metal selector. So all the metals I select, I, I set, are reflected here. So uh, we can get, uh, we can click in here and it will be selected, okay? And we can select uh, by material, or we can select by object type. So if I unselect all, and I'm going to here, I can select only the prongs, only the Boolean operation, only the gems, only the head, all the object types that are in the current document. So obviously there are the objects that are not, uh, that are not in the document, as the cutters or anything else uh, are not present in the document. So we have to select uh, by this panel. If we want to modify it, uh, we have to go here, and modify it. So edit, and here I'm going, I don't know, maybe to change the distance, lateral distance, and maybe uh, maybe the profile, why not? And now it's updated, as you can see. Let me um, hide the gems. And as you can see, the cutter is uh, updated. But there is no need to add to the document to edit any object in the in the tree. But anyway, if you can add it because you want to use this cutter, for instance, uh, with another object, you can restore it at any time. You just click here, and as you see, uh, the object is back. So you can uh, go to here and use this uh, channel cutter at any time. And if you don't want it anymore, uh, just select it and delete it. And the object will disappear from here. And uh, it will be reflected here as well, again. So, uh, well, I think that uh, it's all. I think that it's, um, I can give the word to, to Juan uh, to show you some models a little bit uh, better than, than this model. And um, well, Juan, you can you can go ahead. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can oh. hear you. Yes. Perfect. So let's uh, let's design. Uh, my name is Juan, and I'm the main designer of Cushions. And I'm going to do um, two designs or three. It depends on the time. So uh, the first one it's a bomber ring. We are going to the panel strings. We select the bomber ring and we are going to change the size. In this case, we are going to select the seven half. Okay, we can change the profiles as Henry uh, told us. <clears throat> and we are going to select confirm. Now we are going to select the bomber ring and we are going to juggle right. We are going to select out squish and we are going to select a pattern. In this case, we are going to do um, a pattern of holes, uh, hole patterns in the bomber ring and create a design, um, a simple design, a basic, but it's uh, really fast and easy to do. So we select the 
JALI 7, and we are going to modify the U and B copies. We are going to select, uh, in this case, 14, and we are going to enable the solid. Okay. Now we are going to modify the thickness and select 0 0.70. It takes some time. <clears throat> and now the idea is doable in an intersection between the ring and the pattern. We press OK. And now we are going to do a Boolean intersection. We select uh, the object A, the bomber, and object B, the auto squish. <clears throat> it takes some time uh, to do the, the Boolean. <clears throat> but not so much, so... Uh, Oh. Now, this is a very exciting okay. one. Oh, I is. think uh, design software for jurors come a long way. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and now we are going to, um, we're not going to delete just to see uh, the two patterns. Okay. We are going to select OK. And now <clears throat> we can see how this is uh, the pattern without a switch and with the Boolean. Okay, the next step is select the bomber ring and the idea is cut the top side. We are going to select auto squish. We are going to the right panel. <clears throat> and here we are going to select the curves and we are draw um, some curve, for example, from here to here and inside. Okay, so we are going to disable the the select point and we are going to draw a bit for example something like this and okay we take like this to turn a little bit and now we are going to do something like this <clears throat> Well, we are going to join the curve to the other point. Uh, one second, uh, the end, we select the end, and now we join it. Now we have um, a closed curve, so we go to the perspective. And we are going to do a boolean from this to the bomber ring. Now we are going to do an extrusion. Oop, I didn't take the, the point. Let's wait. Oops. I'm going to take the point and we are going to do an extrusion. Okay, now we are going to cap this structure, uh, um, this uh, surface, we are going to write cap and we select accept. Now we have the surface or solid and we are going to do a boolean on the bomber ring. So we come here and difference, we select the boolean, the bomber ring and we select the surface. We press OK and as you can see, now we have a ring. I think that is this is pretty cool. It's easy to do, uh, and it looks uh, pretty fancy. Stunning. Okay, uh, let's go to the to the other design. So I'm going to create a new file. Okay. And the other design, it's um, it's some kind of um, of eternity, but it's not an eternity, but it's uh, from the from a scratch. Okay, so <clears throat> we are going to start going to rings and select outside ring rail. 
okay that is our outside we are going to select the size in this case we are going to select the seven half because it's uh, the normal the regular and we are going to modify the top height to 3.8 the side for example 3.3 and the bottom more or less 2.4 we can change of course uh, the offset profiles to get um, uh, the upper file that we want okay we have a lot of a lot of patterns a lot of files we are going to select the one and we are going to select okay the next step is do it is do a <clears throat> an, a, a profile placer we are going to tools to the panel tools we are going to select profile placer we are going to select the rail curve and the outside rail now we are going to modify the size we are going to select a, a big size because we want a, a big a big ring 37 and we are going to modify the position more or less in the middle for example 0 0.2 it will be okay i think and we are going to do a mirror the idea now is to an auto sweep and we will have the surface of our ring. Let's select the rail, we select the profiles, <clears throat> and we select the sweep two and the second rail, the outside. Okay, as you can see, now we have a ring where we can uh, set the gems, uh, make cutters or something or something like that. Now we are going to do the gems. We are going to select the panel gems and we are going to do a, a gemson curve. We are going to select the outside ring rail, the object, the auto sweep. And now we can modify the start point and the end point. Okay. We are going to set it on the top, maybe a 0 0.7, and the end point. We are going to move the gems on the top to do it uh, symmetrical. And let's move to the um, 0 0.56, I think. Yeah. Okay, now we are going to modify the gem size. We can modify the gem size, even we can change the, the gem cut if we want. It depends of your, your style. In this case, we are going to select this, the, gem, the gem size 1.9. And we are going to gem options, and we are going to select the gem placement on the table. Now, as you can see, if we change the, the display viewport, they are inside. We are going to press OK, and there is our gems. The next step will be uh, do the cutters, the gem cutter, the channel cutter, to have uh, another look of this uh, of this ring. So we are going to panel cutters, and we are going to select channel cutter. We are going to select the gems, and we are going to select the height. We are going to select 1.8. It, I think it will be okay and we can change the caps we can select the uh, round squared sharp but in this case I think that the square it will look uh, better so let's create the caps shield three I think it will be okay I miss the, uh, the prongs. I think that it's better to do before. So I will create the prongs on row. To have a good look, I can um, activate and enable the wireframe display to see how the prongs are, are inside of the ring. So I think that is okay. Maybe a little bigger, the channel cutter. So uh, I, I'm gonna select okay, and I'm gonna modify the channel cutter we are going to edit and we are going to modify the caps 
we are going to confirm. And I think that it looks good. So the next step, it's create the gem cutters. We are going to select the gem cutter. We select the gems and we modify the depth. And we are going to modify a little bit the bottom taper. Like mm, 0 0.3, the 0 0.3. Okay. And the last point, it's create. We are going to create a channel cutter inside the ring. So we are going to select channel cutter. We are going to select the gems. And we are going to modify the channel. We are going to move it to down and create a lateral distance really big because we want a cut inside of it. So we are going to move it, for example, let's see, 120, and we are going to modify the height. We are going to select 1.4. And we are going to press OK. OK, the idea is now do a Boolean difference and see how it is looking. So we are going to Tools, Boolean difference. We select the auto sweep, the ring, and we are going to select the channel cutters. OK. As we can see, uh, the, the prongs have to be um, deeper. So we are going to modify it. We can modify just uh, selecting the prongs and clicking by the scroll button. Now we are going to modify the dip. Okay. I think that it's really cool how it looks. I'm going to modify the ground just yes, to have a look of our ring. And the idea now is that we can change the outside ring rail and see other models with, this, with the same pattern. So we are going to modify the outside to other, to other patterns, for example, this pattern. And as you can see, it takes the gems, the gemstone curve, take the same um, iso curve, but it keeps the it keeps the model uh, in perfect uh, in perfect status. For example, we can see this other. Or maybe maybe I don't know this. <clears throat> As you can see, it fits really good. Or this other. It's an easy way to do a, a ring with other patterns, but keeping all the parametric um, parametric history and parametric gems, curves. So we are going to select this ring. And we are going to see how it looks. We are going to change the materials of the ring, of the prongs. And even if we want, we can change the gems. To take, for example, a cushion. Or take, for example, I don't know, I share, I share cuts. As you can see, it looks good. And we can say how the retrace, uh, how the retrace mode is looking for. And there is. So this is the, the two designs that I wanted to, to show. And, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, uh, because we have time, I'm gonna show you the Babet 
okay, in a easy model, uh, in an easy way. So we are going to create a new file. And I'm going to create a signet ring. Okay. I'm going to clear this. And there is a signet ring we are going to create to modify the table, to modify the width, and change, of course, the profiles if we want. In this case, we are going to set this profile because it's a good profile to do a puppet. And now we are going to do a cutter, the hollow ring. We are going to select the signet. And as you can see, it makes a hollow ring, a cut inside. We are going to press OK. And now we are going working with the pave. We select the panel gems and select pave. We are going to set the object top, top of the, of the ring. And as you can see, there is the pave. We can modify the number of gems, modify the gem sizes. We can select a minimum and a, gem, and a maximum gem. And we are going to refresh. And as you can see, there will create a random gems like with this kind of sizes. We can modify the space between gems and the margin. And the margin of the borders. We are going to create more gems just to, to have a look. And we are going to change the sizes. Uh, we are going to select 1.3 and we are going to refresh maybe a little less. <clears throat> mm, a little bit more. We can go to the most smooth and add our gems. We can select the size here and just add the gems, for example, in parts where we see that it's empty. Like here, we can delete, for example, this, which is not uh, fitting the, the place. <clears throat> and we can select more if we want. I think that it looks uh, it looks good. So I'm going to add one gem more here. OK, and I'm going to select Confirm, and let's see the Pave Prongs. <clears throat> we are going to Gem Settings and select Pave Prongs. It takes some time. <clears throat> so let's let's wait. <clears throat> so just a, just a an appointment case. one. I see some yeah. gems which are touching between them. So uh, in this case, you can you can modify the size of these gems. So I know that some people probably will asking, okay, but these gems cannot be grabbed with the with the prongs. But this is a, a demo, obviously. But uh, there is a way to modify uh, the size of the gems, and there is no problem to adjust these these uh, sizes to match and to be grabbed uh, for the prompts. Just just disappointment. You can continue. You're right. Uh, thank you, Enrique. Um, as as he say, we can modify the the sizes. Okay, just to to fit or even. Uh, Lead, uh, make a little uh, little gems, and create more gems to fit the, the prongs on the on the gems. Well, actually, I more. I mean, I'm sorry, Juan, another time. Yeah, I I mean with the, with the with the mouse mode. Obviously, you can do it by this uh, yeah. way, but uh, with the mouse mode, when the gems are placed and the model is finished. So you can modify mm -hmm. only one gem or two or three gems, 
um, with the mouse mode, just setting the resize. Yeah, we can create here or we can resize if we want. As he said, we can resize the gems that they don't fit uh, as we want. Okay, for example, we can create big gems or we can create little gems in other parts. Okay, to do our, our pattern where we want. It's really fast, as you can see. You can delete and, of course, you can block it. If you want to block some gems, you can block it. So now, if we move, we keep the, uh, the position. So, <clears throat> well, we are going to create a little bit more and let's see the, the power Bronx. I'm going to create some more here. And okay. So now we are going to select the pave and select the pave prongs. As you said before, as I said before, it takes some time. Yes, uh, we have to wait. And now we have the prongs. Of course, we can make the prongs bigger to take all the gems and we can create the, the prongs and we can modify, move or delete. Okay. We can modify the margin, the tolerance, the taper, the prong deep, all that we want. For example, here we can delete these prongs and we can add our prongs. Here we can delete and we can add our prongs. We can delete this. But in fact, I think that if we make a little margin, it will expand the, the prongs to the, to the margin of the ring. Yeah, I think it's better better now. So now we are we can add the prongs and delete, add some prongs to have the, the ring that we want. We can modify the diameter again and keep setting our prongs on the gems. Okay. Uh, another thing that we can do, it's the Azure cutter. Azure cutter works doing the cutters inside the, the ring. So we are going to select Azure cutters. We select the gems and we select the object. We press enter. <clears throat> and we will see um, how the cuts uh, works. It takes some time to all the Booleans, uh, the Boolean difference takes some time. It depends of the, the processor. There are um, there misses some prongs, but <clears throat> as you saw, uh, we can add when we want. It just takes some time, but you have to delete and, and set all the prongs that you that you need on your ring.
Well, it's taking some some time. Don't worry, Juan. Just relax and take some coffee. But this kind of operations take some time. Don't worry. <clears throat> In the meantime, if there's any questions, type them in in the question tab. Uh, this would be a good moment. Yeah, it, it's a good, yeah. a good moment. Yeah, if you want. Yeah. There is uh, the zero cutters, as you can see. And now we can do the Boolean difference, select the ring and select the uh, zero cutters. Yeah, if Enrique wants, uh, we can just uh, respond to some questions. Sure. If you have some questions, just ask it through the chat, and and I I will answer or Juan will answer. <clears throat> anyway, we have we, we want to um, show the the website if we have time and talk about uh, our software and how it works uh, in the in the website <clears throat> yeah so the volume operation <clears throat> will take another uh, big time probably one minute more or less yeah so uh, maybe I can uh, show my screen because I forget uh, a couple of things to show and maybe we can switch. Okay. Yes, sure. Thank you, Barbara. So I, I miss a couple of features uh, to show it, uh, which are, well, I, I show it all the parametric features, but there are uh, a couple of features that I think that is interesting and I didn't show it, which is um, the, the reset transforms and the remove booleans. So, for instance, this is the, the model which I made before, which is not, not like the Juan's model, but it's okay. And I'm going uh, to add another Boolean operation here, okay? So, uh, I have the, the, the channel cutter in here, but I will add the individual cutters. So, I will select the gem cutter. I will go to options and I will increase the depth. Uh, I think that it's okay. And I will make from the related comments another Boolean difference. So note that the first Boolean was the channel cutter, the big one. So if I made another Boolean, I will have two Boolean operations in here, okay? So this is the object A. The second object uh, was already set, which are the, the gem cutters. And now uh, we'll have two operations in here. But what happens if uh, I want to remove the first Boolean operation, but keep the second one? So in this case, I have these holes of here, which are the last uh, holes, and the first Boolean. So I can remove these holes by undoing this operation. But if I want to remove the first operation, I will have to make two undos. And I will lost the, the, the individual cutters and the channel cutter. So there is a feature uh, which is remove Boolean, which can, uh, which can do that. Okay. So I'm going uh, to this Boolean. And uh, I can reset this Boolean, so remove Boolean. I can remove the last one, but that's not the point. I will remove this one, which is the, the channel cutter. So if I click here, <laughs> it will take a little, a little bit because it has to uh, compute the other one. But it will keep the holes of the second Boolean operation, but the first Boolean operation, which is the channel cutter, is removed. So that's a, a feature that I think that it's, it's interesting. So another feature that I didn't talk about is the reset transforms. For instance, if I move uh, these gems, uh, all, the, all the associated elements, in this case, the prongs and the, and the cutters, will be uh, moved as well. OK, so if I want uh, to reset this transform, 
there is a feature in here which is reset position. So it will reset any position that we have in here. Even if we, for instance, uh, get this gem and move it, for instance, or make it bigger, which makes no sense in jewelry, I know. But uh, if we made something like that by error, we can go to here and reset by tran reset transform. And it will set the original state. Okay, so this is uh, what I forget <laughs> while I wanted to, to let you know. So uh, I'm going to show the, the website. So if you want to try the, the program, I think that it's a, a good idea uh, to download the program. So we have uh, uh, a free trial. So let me, let me place the, the slideshow firstly. So <laughs> I'm sorry. We have a free uh, trial license for 30 days. So you can ask uh, anything to us. Uh, we will usually answer in 24 hours. Um, we have free technical support, even in trial period. So um, you can try it by yourself. I encourage to try it by yourself, uh, play a little bit with the software. And if you have any questions or, or anything, you can, you can feel free to ask it to us and we will be glad to help you. Okay, so uh, the license, uh, there is no compute limitation. So you can install the program in as many computers as, uh, as you want. The only limitation is that you can only use the program um, simultaneously in one computer or two, or depending of the license. But you can install in the office computer, in the home computer, in the laptop. So there is no limitation in that. And uh, as, as Barbara said, uh, you already know the prices, but you can check it in in the Novet website or in our website. So uh, if you go to our website, uh, you only have to go to download. And here, uh, when you click to download, if you are not registered, like me, okay, I'm going to log out. When you click to download, it will ask for register. So just uh, type your name, go to sign up, Type your name, your email, and register, and you will be able uh, to download the software. And a trial license will be uh, automatically assigned to your account for 30 days. Uh, if you need some more help, you can go to the tutorials uh, page. And you'll see that here there are uh, a lot of videos that uh, Juan uh, made with a lot of love. And you can uh, follow these models. This is the, the introduction to the layout, uh, but you can see a full models that you can uh, follow step by step and uh, try the program and try all the features that the program have. And another time, if you have any question, any problem, if you are stuck in any step, uh, you can write it uh, to hello uh, at uh, crossbytes3d.com and we will get to help you. Okay, so I think that that uh, if there is any question, that's the moment to do it, and we'll be glad to answer. Yes, uh, there is one question. Um, is there a Mac version, or does it only work on Windows? There is no Mac version, and I will explain why. So uh, this program is based in Rhino, and well, we didn't show the Rhino version, but probably a lot of people know the Rhino. But Rhino has um, a Mac version, but uh, the Mac version doesn't have the same commands that the Windows version. So there are some missing commands in the Mac version. Furthermore, the commands that are in Mac version, the behavior that they have, it's not the same. So uh, there is no natively uh, Rhino um, Mac version which works as the Windows one, and uh, there is no version uh, for cross gems. But uh, it can be used in Mac version. It can be used uh, using Bootcamp. So if you install Bootcamp in a Mac, uh, you can install Windows and you can use it uh, without any problem. Great, thank you, thank you, Eric. Uh, I think that was. The only question. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. Great. Right. So, 
there is uh, no more questions uh we can we can finish the webinar so i'm i'm so so glad uh, to to did this webinar with you i was expecting that i was waiting that uh anxious so i think that it was uh, very good and just uh, say thank you to you barbara to let us <laughs> to let us show our software. Um, no, thank you. As I was saying, you know, um, design software for jewelry design has really come a long way. It's, um, I mean, amazing the things you can do now with very, even little CAD, you know, um, yeah, thank you. experience. So that's wonderful. Thank you guys. Um, I'm going to take my screen back for a second and show everybody okay. where they can find Cross Gems um, and Novedge. So check us out on Novedge.com where you can find both Cross Gems and Rhino. And um, that's, that's all for me as well. Thank you so much for joining today. It was a lovely hour well spent. And looking forward to more demo and a lot of jewelry being designed. Bye bye, everybody. Have a great rest. Thank you. Rest. Thank you bye, bye bye. bye. Oh, thank bye. you all. Goodbye.